Number six from the 2007 Advanced Tire, McLaurin Series. Now, unfortunately, the first bit says find. Find the McLaurin Series for Cos X as far as the term in X to the 4. I say unfortunately because it could just have said write down or state, because this is one of the ones you should learn. Well, in fact, there's only one that you should learn, and that's the E to the X one, since that's just a straightforward pattern, because it's got such a straightforward derivative. That's just 1 plus X over 1 factorial, X squared over 2 factorial, and so on, following that pattern. And from that, the sine and the cosine just use alterna alternating terms of those. From the Euler equation, e to the i theta equals cos theta plus i sine theta. So the replacing x with, I could just call that i x, you would have this. e to the i x would be simply those with each of the x's replaced with an i x, so there's just going to be various powers of i appearing through them. So the first one would just be 1, the next one would be i x over 1 factorial, the next one would be i squared x, so that's a negative 1. So that's negative x squared over 2 factorial. The next one would be i cubed. So that's a negative i. So minus i x cubed over 3 factorial. Plus, and then it would be i to the power 4. So you're back to 1 again. So just plus x to the 4 over 4 factorial and so on. And then equating real and imaginary parts. You could get this one from those terms. The cos x would come from this using the real parts of it. So that would be 1. Oops. minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the 4 over 4 to factorial. Notice it's just alternate terms of e to the x. Once you have them e to the x, you can get cos x and sine x straight from it. Cos x starts at 1, the sine x starts here. When x is 0, the sine is 0. So the sine would be x over 1 factorial minus x cubed over 3 plus x to the 5. So you could have stated that straight away. However, it said find, so we'll just have to go through it all. So we'll just have to go through the various derivatives of it. Well, let's just give this a name then. Let's just call this f of x equals. So we've got f of x equals that. So f dash, the first derivative would be negative sine x. The second derivative would be negative cos x. The third derivative would be back to sine x. And the fourth derivative would be back to cos x, which is where you started. And you'll need to go as far as this, because it said just to get it up to the term in x to the 4, whether or not any of these happen to exist when x is 0. That's what we need to find out. What are the values at 0? First one at 0. Cos of 0, that's 1. Second one, the first derivative at 0, well, sign that'll be 0. The second derivative at 0, well, that's a cos, so that's 1, but it's a negative, so negative 1. The third derivative at 0, that's a sign that'll be 0. The fourth derivative at 0, that's a cos, and you're back to 1 again. So there are these three terms. Terms that knew anyway. So cos x will be the power series made up from these coefficients then. Maybe I could set that out, that summation for that power series. It would be the sum of, from n0 to infinity, of the nth derivative at 0, times x to the n over n factorial. So that would be, take them in order, well, for the first one, when n was 0, for the first one, I've got a 1, so that means I've got 1 times x to the 0 over 0 factorial. When n is 1, there's nothing there, so when n is 2, I've got a negative 1 times x squared over 2 factorial. When n is 3, there's nothing there. When n is 4, I've got a 1, so plus 1 times x to the 4 over 4 factorial. And those are the only ones it wanted. So I can write out cos x equals 1, because anything to the 0 is 1, and 0 factorial is defined to be 1, minus 2 factorial is just 2, minus a half of x squared, 4 factorial is 24, plus a 24th of x to the 4 which you knew anyway. Those are one of the ones that you should learn. e to the x sine x cos x.
So the second part says, deduce the McLaurin series for f of x equals a half cos 2x. We'll just as well remove that previous part, because this is the real f of x here. That other one was bogus. It was just a temporary convenience just to give it a name. As far as the term in x to the 4, well, that simply means I take this. Here's the cos of x. So I want, if I want a half of cos, I'll have a half of that. But that's cos of x. I want cos of 2x. So you just replace each of the x's by 2x. So 1 minus a half of... 2x squared, doesn't look very halfish, plus 1 24th of 2x to the power of 4. Just tidy this little bit up. So what have we got? 2 squared is 4, a half of 4 is 2. 2 to the 4 is 16, 16 over 24 is 2 thirds. And then finally half of that, half of 1 is a half, a half of 2 is 1, and a half of 2 thirds just leaves you one of those thirds. And that's what f of x is meant to be in this question. Last part says, hence write down the first three non-zero terms of f of 3x. This being the real f. I want f of 3x. Well, that just means, once again, I take this expression here and I replace each x with a 3x. So f of 3x will be a half minus the 3x squared plus a third of the 3x to the power 4. And luckily I've got three terms because it wanted the first three. So that's a half minus 3 squared is 9. So that's 9x plus a third of, well, 3 to the 4 divided by 3 is only 3 to the 3. So that must be 27x to the 4 for f of 3x. And while you were at it, you could put the square back on the x. And there we are. Okay, apart from the 9x squared. Ha! <laughs> Tumshay.